What's up guys? A big thank you to all five escape members who voted for me. My name is Yuan Jin, and now I officially become the technology director along with Kiana Wilson in Fire Escape Films. It may seem an intimidating hobby if you consider all filmmaking a Hollywood blockbuster. The Jericho. But filmmaking actually covers much broader topics in which normal people like us can afford to learn and produce. In this video, I hope to give everyone an overview of how filmmaking works and how you can get started. Without further ado, let's roll the intro. First of all, normally when people refer to films, they're usually talking about narrative films where actors perform the scenes and there are written scripts, dialogues, plots, and a crew of people working closely to produce such a film. That is indeed what we do in Firescape Films. But I would also claim that a narrative film is probably the hardest type of filmmaking, which does not have to be the only option. Although I know many of you who are watching this video probably want to make narrative films, Let's take a look at what other filmmaking types there exist first. Most people interested in producing film level videos will take their gears when they are traveling and very likely they will produce some nice travel videos. A large portion of full-time filmmakers start with wedding videos because of the high market demand. After they hone their skills and gradually build relationships with more clients, they will get the opportunity to shoot commercial videos for some big brands or get to know some music artists and produce music gigs. Nowadays, with DJI drones and filmmaking skills, many real estate agents are also looking for independent filmmakers to shoot nice videos to better sell their mansions. Outside Hollywood, there is a growing demand for professional filmmakers to produce all sorts of films. Maybe there won't be a large amount of viewers of this video who could be a director, DP or colorist in the next Transformers or Fast Furious series, but I do believe it's possible for you to make 80 wedding videos a year, earn 6 figures or simply produce 1 or 2 nice travel videos next time, depending on how much time and efforts you're willing to devote into learning about making a film. Last but not least, it's highly likely that you can actually take the job of a director of photography, music, composer, or colorist if you participate in one of the Fire Escape films, even if you have no previous experience. Now let's talk about the overall procedure of making a short narrative film. The production can usually be separated into three stages. Pre-production, production, and post-production. Before a movie comes into production, the screenwriter will write a script about the whole film. When I say pre-production, it means that there is already an approved script and the plots and dialogues are already designed. To an experienced crew, pre-production is always the most important part. The director will think about every camera angle and movement, discuss with the crew, design a shot list, pre-design the color tone, lighting, dialogue emotions, and also music options. The producer shall make sure all things are available on the shooting dates, often shooting permits if required, prepared launches for the crew, and make sure everything goes smoothly during the shooting day. Basically, the movie is already played several times in the director and DP's mind, and when they actually come into the scene, it's all about matching the real scenes to the movie in their head. A shot list is important for communication among crew members especially important for the director, DP, and the camera operator to reach a consensus. With a well-prepared production stage, when it comes to the production day, it's all about execution and implementation of pre-designed scenes. Nonetheless, to beginners, how to execute well is a huge topic and requires a substantial amount of practice. I will use several videos later to better explain details about the color profile, white balance, focal lens, framing, camera movements, lighting, audio settings, and so much on. For now, let's ignore the technical details and talk about some big pictures of post-production. In other words, what we will do in the editing room. In general, post-production can be separated into four parts. Editing, visual effects, sound design, and color grading. Editing in narrative films means that you choose the appropriate clips, put them on a timeline, and make sure the timing matches between clips. There are three most famous editing software of which you should be aware. 
They are Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, and DaVinci Resolve. Some of you may also heard about AV Media Composer, which is a must in Hollywood due to its history and nice teamwork functionality. But nowadays, the other three really dominate the market outside Hollywood. Currently, Adobe Premiere Pro is still the most famous and well-supported software. Here, well-supported means that you encounter a problem in Premiere Pro, it's highly likely that you can find solutions easily on the internet because either other people also encountered the same problem before you or someone already made a tutorial about the stuff you want to accomplish. Final Cut Pro 10 is a great software with optimized performance on macOS. And I believe many YouTubers and professional filmmakers use Final Cut Pro to edit and color grade their films. There are plenty of plugins and add-ons available on Video Hive, Adamant's Invado, Motion Array for Final Cut Pro, which makes the editing much easier. The problem is that it's the, uh, it only supports a macOS platform, so it may be hard to work in a team where someone uses Windows machines. DaVinci Resolve has been the go-to product for color grading since its very beginning in Hollywood movies. Recently, starting from DaVinci Resolve 16, the software becomes an all-in-one solution. There are seven pages in it. Media page, cut page, edit page, fusion page, color page, fairlight page, and export page. One of the best messages for beginners is that it has a free version which includes already the majority of tools that you can use right now and you can unlock the full functionality with $299 for a lifetime license. Although many YouTubers brag about the advantage of DaVinci Resolve over Premiere Pro these days, from my personal experience, there is one significant reason that keeps me using both instead of switching from one to the other. The playback performance. In Premiere Pro, when you work with multiple layers, and the performance will usually be better than DaVinci Resolve. If you use a laptop as I do, Premiere Pro will often be smoother when editing, which means a lot because you hope to edit fast and accurately. DaVinci Resolve drains a lot from GPU power, and you have a, if you have a strong GPU um, on a desktop, you may have better performance using DaVinci Resolve. So there's a trade-off. Visual effects can be a very daunting term. When you look at the behind the scenes of some Hollywood blockbuster, some visual effects cost millions of dollars while lasting for only a few seconds. It may involve some very advanced 3D design and rendering, Software like Autodesk, Maya, Blender, Fusion Studio. It's good to know the existence of this software, but I would suggest most of us ignore them at the beginning, or maybe forever. We may never get to that area unless we work on some real professional film. What we may care more about should be Adobe After Effects, Apple Motion, and the Fusion page in DaVinci Resolve for visual effects. The Fusion page in DaVinci Resolve is node-based, which is quite similar to the Fusion Studio's design. In contrast, After Effects works on a layer-based model. And when making visual effects, the workflow between these two softwares are quite different. A general suggestion is that before you understand the workflow of, a, of Premiere Pro and actually added a few um, videos in DaVinci Resolve, don't think about messing with Adobe After Effects or the Fusion page. Sound design is the next very important part of post-production. There is a famous saying by Georgia Lucas, sound is half the picture. Sound design and music choices really determine a large portion of the emotion. In DaVinci Resolve, we can use the Fairlight page to compose music and dubbings. I don't want to intimidate you too much on the technical complexity as we haven't reached the part to teach how to compose sound. So let's just enjoy and see two clips with and without sound design.
out of here. It's fine, it's fine. The final main stage of post-production is color grading, another large topic. Usually when shooting a film, we will use the log color profile to obtain a higher dynamic range and allow larger scale change of colors. Here are some famous movies, the color of which is so impressive that they become a reference of a typical style of color grading. Joker, Blade Runner 2049, La La Land, um, Moonlight, and so many more. I will show you a brief color demo I graded before to showcase the difference color grading can make. stick with DaVinci Resolve because there are so many tools in it and I can use a physical panel to fine tune the colors. Anyway, color grading is all about subtleness. Despite that, we can also use Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro to do color grading. In Premiere Pro, there is a Lumetri color panel which also has many advanced tools. Up until now, I hope you have got a general overview of how filmmaking works. Are you excited now? If you are a UChicago student, consider joining Firescape Films to make films with us. If you find the content interesting, please smash the like button and click subscribe for more awesomeness. I will see you next time.